In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart, Pilot Jack Rulin in Skycam 16, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark, and Joe Zone on sports. This is Newswatch 16. Good evening. Officials are calling it a good reminder to those of you who live in the West Pittston, Pittston areas to keep boiling your drinking water. They're referring to two more cases of giardiasis, the first cases of the intestinal disease since March. Newswatch 16's Mark Davis says despite PG&W's clean test results, DER says the Springbrook Reservoir is still contaminated, but some people are getting fed up with boiling. Over here, I it was Paul Dolphy and Carmela Cagnita have been making the trip to the West Pittston Borough Building for clean water no. twice a week for more than six months now. And frankly, they're sick and tired of it. Yes, very sick of it. And it shouldn't be this way. We're paying good water bills and we should, uh, they should take care of it better than they do. Because I'm getting tired of just to come for water all the time. You see, we're so disgusting, really. It is disgusting. Both were surprised to hear of the two new cases of geodiasis, but were able to understand how some people might give up on boiling, buying, or going to buffalo tanks like these for clean water. Health officials say the new cases are from people who thought the boil may have been lifted, but nearly 8,000 people in the Pittston, West Pittston area are still under the boil because their water is coming from the Springbrook Reservoir, and that's still dirty as far as the Department of Environmental Resources is concerned. Somewhere in that system, either in the reservoir or in the pipes themselves, uh, that system is still, still alive, still viable, and unfortunately two people got sick from it. Mark Carmen tells me the boil won't be lifted until sometime later this year, possibly not until September. These latest two cases of geodiasis are serving a purpose. That purpose is that it's showing the people in Pittston and West Pittston and the other areas still under the boil that there still is a need to get their water either from an approved source like this or to keep boiling because apparently geodiasis in these areas is still with us. Mark Davis, Newswatch 16, West Pittston. It's a cancer-causing chemical that has people worried in one Clinton County community, and now a national group is joining local residents in a push for health screenings of citizens in Lock Haven. This is the former Drake chemical plant there. It closed in 1981. Now the United Church of Christ and its Committee for Racial Justice is asking that former workers at the plant be given regular health checkups. This in light of a recent disclosure by the EPA that beta naphthalamine, a known cancer causer in humans, is present at the closed plant. A Lock Haven group also asking for health screenings told us why the National Church Group is now pressing the issue. We have a, a national organization out there fighting for us. It's a local group. It's very hard for us to make our demands known to, especially our U.S. senators. This way, with a national organization with the track record that they have, it will lend added weight to our efforts to get the screening or the cleanup in Lock Haven. Clean, Citizens and Laborers for Environmental Action Now also wants health testing for former workers at the close American Color and Chemical Plant, located next door to Lock Haven's Drake Chemical. It's a battery recycling plant that has some people in Schuylkill County worried tonight. Some people claim the plant near Ashland makes the air smell foul. Newswatch 16's Bob Costantini says DER has stepped in to find out whether that's true. Ashland Metals Company has been recycling old car batteries for over a year now in Schuylkill County. Truckloads of batteries are brought in from all over the East Coast. But some people living close by say the plant is noisy and at times smells. Real rank taste or smelling. Like I said, sometimes it may last for a few minutes and it might be once a week or twice a week. And because lead is removed from the batteries, the woods fear lead may be getting into the air. So I'm concerned for his safety and Everyone, they have children over here, and there's children down the street. Manager Ed Powell knows some people don't like his plant and believes these nails were deliberately put on the driveway. We didn't tell him we were coming ahead of time, but he agreed to show us around. We're standing here right in the middle of this operation. Now, it may be noisy, but as far as the smell is concerned, it's very faint smell of what you would think was battery acid. You smell it once in a while, but very faintly. We're standing here right in the middle of the operation. After the batteries are cut open by machine, the lead gets dumped out for recycling. Put the lead into the air, DER told us to put this building up, 
put everything under cover so there wouldn't be no problem like that, which we have complied with. We do put soda ash on the floor. We keep our place clean. We catch everything that goes off these batteries and gets reused or gets shipped out to be neutralized. In short, Powell says the plant is not harming the environment, and DER officials agree. But because of complaints, air monitors are now in place to check if any lead reaches nearby homes. Bob Costantini, News Watch 16, Butler Township, Schuylkill County. When News Watch 16 continues, we'll take you to a local college campus to see what's the latest and hottest class around. Plus, Action 16 and Jerry Gartenberg will be here to show us how to protect ourselves from the rays of the sun while still getting tanned. Stay with us. If you run and bike, you're in for a treat. Run five miles and bike 20 in the great Steamtown by Athlon Sunday, July 15th. You'll help raise money for Steamtown, get yourself a great t-shirt and commemorative ribbon, win a trophy and win a getaway weekend at the new Hilton at Lackawanna Station. There's even a mini biathlon for children under 12. The great Steamtown by Athlon is sponsored by Stroh's Beer, Royal Bottling, and Paul Gronsky Enterprises. Pick up an entry blank today at Gronsky's or other area bike shops, area running shops, or local beer distributors who sell Stroh's. If you plan on driving between Wyoming and Jenkins Township, you might want to allow yourself some extra travel time. PennDOT has closed the 8th Street Bridge to one-lane traffic. Newswatch 16 noticed that these holes opened up in the span. PennDOT says they'll be repairing the 8th Street Bridge today, tomorrow, and possibly on Wednesday. Now that summer is here, a lot of people are working on that golden tan. But Action 16's Jerry Gartenberg has a warning. There's danger in those rays. Jerry tells us the best way to stay out of danger is when you stay in the sun. We bask in it, bake in it, sometimes do just about anything to soak up the summer sun. Anything for... A great tan. But every time you soak up the sun, like the folks here at Nayag Pool in Scranton, you're being treated to a dose of ultraviolet rays, rays that can damage the skin. With chronic exposure, many years exposure to these ultraviolet rays, you could end up having premature aging of the skin, pre-skin cancers, and even skin cancers. What can sunbathers do to protect their skin from the sun's damage? Well, the best thing that we have to offer today are the use of the various sunscreens. Sunscreens block out most of the sun's harmful rays before they have a chance to damage your skin. Be careful when you shop for a sunscreen because there are lots of products on the shelves that actually attract the sun's rays and cause burning. To help you sort through the confusion, a government panel devised a number system for sunscreens. On many sunscreens, you'll find a number ranging from 2 to 15. The higher the number, the more protection you get. How do you know what number is right for you? We spoke with 10 skin specialists in our area. They recommend we all use a number 15 sunscreen since that offers the most protection. It's worth checking with your doctor too. And don't worry, you can still get a tan. It will just take longer. Of course, no sunscreen will do you any good unless you use it the right way. The experts say you should apply the stuff about a half hour before you go outside so it has a chance to soak in and then reapply it about every two hours. And there's good news for those of us sunbathers who plan to spend some time keeping cool this summer. Some manufacturers have introduced sunscreens that will stay on your skin for up to an hour while you're in the water. Now that's important because your chances of getting burned by the sun are sometimes greater in here than they are out there on the grass. Jerry Gartenberg, Action 16. And Jerry adds that if you'd like more information on sunscreens, you can get it by sending a stamped, self-addressed, business size envelope to the Skin Cancer Foundation, Box 561, New York, New York, 10156. Did you ever look up at an airplane and think, gee, I'd like to learn how to fly? Well, Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens says there's a unique kind of flight school in Clinton County that not only teaches you how to fly, but it's also helping teachers to teach kids about aerospace. This is what you call a pre-flight walk around, checking an airplane before you take off to make sure everything's okay. The people doing it here in Lock Haven are flight students. All have enrolled in a state-subsidized aerospace teacher program run out of the Lock Haven University. Half of these students are actually public school teachers. They want to learn how to fly, but they also want to have enough flight knowledge to pass along to their students. 
I feel that anything that adds to my knowledge about Earth and space is uh, to my advantage. And I thought I might like to try to fly. I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm going to try. I was under the understanding that it would help me with my courses. I could use it in the chemistry, and the advanced science uses a lot of physics. And uh, it helps. I need six credits for certification, and this would be a good way to, to get my certification taken care of. It exposes them to aviation, and hopefully it'll go on to their students and understand more how aviation fits into our society. In three weeks, the people taking this course will have enough ground school to pass the Federal Aviation Administration's private pilot test. So not only does this state-funded course promote an interest in aviation, but it's also a lot of fun for the students. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16, Lock Haven. Our chief meteorologist is about to have some fun. Tom Clark is next with the forecast. Yes. And I can hear some rumbling out there, so that yes. means rain's on the way. It could be coming down now. Uh -huh. I hope you have your windows up out there. Yes. We're going to take a close-up look at the radar when we come back. Stay tuned. This week on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, we'll show you how to survive on Mother Nature's natural edibles as we delve into the skillful art of foraging. And we'll travel to Elysburg to gain a first-hand look at the traditional sport of Pennsylvania State trap shooting. Plus, a taste-tempting walleye recipe that's sure to make a hit. This week, only on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life at 7 o'clock. Saturday on WNEP-TV 16. I think Tom Clark was hoping the rain would hold off for about a half hour, but no such luck. Well, that's the way it goes. Uh, I thought I could beat out this line of thunder showers moving down, but had to remove my tie and jacket. Don't want to worry the wife at home about getting any stains <laughs> on my new tie. So uh, let's get right to the current temperatures outside now before I get struck by lightning, and you wouldn't want that to happen, would you? Don't want to set a bad example either. Here we go. The temperature is now in the mid-70s. The humidity is 46%. The wind is light. The barometer falling. The air quality today, very good for breathing. A 50 in Wilkes-Barre and a 48 up there in Scranton. The range in temperature today, 76 and 62. We were in a heat wave on this date back in 1952, no doubt about it. The record low, 41 degrees. A shot there overlooking Scranton before the clouds began building this afternoon. Now, here we go to the live radar scan, the 60-mile sweep. There's some green right there bearing down on the backyard here now. Some heavy thunderstorms in uh, Lackawanna and uh, Luzerne County. Also, some heavy thunderstorms now going on down near Bloomsburg in Columbia County and down in parts of Northumberland and Schuylkill County. If you live down in uh, Pottsville, uh, get ready. It looks like you're about to get hit with some storms. And a few more popping up over the uh, north-central counties of Pennsylvania now as well. Let's zoom in on that 30-mile scan, and I can show you. Between Scranton and Wilkes-Barre, look at this area of showers and thunderstorms. And some of these uh, uh, cells here, some very heavy downpours reported in parts of northern Luzerne and northern uh, uh, Lackawanna County. Look at a little bit of red showing up there at times as the sweep goes by. So some areas uh, will see some heavy rain over the next uh, hour or two as these storms moving south southeastward or towards the east southeast at about 25 miles per hour let's go to the satellite view a pocket of cold air moving through pennsylvania in the upper atmosphere uh, causing these thunderstorms to develop after all the uh, heating we had from the sun earlier today but look to the west it's more stable this air mass will be coming over us tomorrow no chance of rain as we head through tuesday and wednesday of this week but there's another cold front out here you can see it that brings our next chance for rain later on this week. Here's my forecast for tonight coming up. Uh, some showers, a couple of heavy showers and thunderstorms in the area up until about 9.30 tonight. I think after that, skies will begin to clear and it'll begin cooling off nicely. 53 the low in Tawanda, about the middle 50s uh, over there in White Mills. Okay, 52 in Benton, 54 in Shenandoah, low 50s in Lock Haven. Uh, a cool night for sleeping tonight. Here we go for tomorrow. Nice all day. A beautiful day. A few patchy cumulus clouds. Low humidities once again. Temperatures just a bit below normal. Mid to upper 70s over the viewing area. Marion Heights, 78 year high tomorrow. Du Bois Town, 77. A northwest wind keeping things comfortable all day. Now the health watch coming up reflecting the low humidity. Resistance to aches and pains very high once again. And you may just find yourself in a pretty good mood tomorrow. 
as well, even though it is just a Tuesday. Sunrise, 5.32 tomorrow, and the sun will set Tuesday evening uh, at about 8.40. Okay, a shower, a thunder shower this evening, uh, becoming clear later on tonight. Nice tomorrow, partly cloudy but dry Wednesday, 82. Some rain in the form of showers and thunder showers likely on Thursday. Temperatures below normal the latter half of the week as well. Hey, I made it. I'm coming in, though. Come on in here. Yeah, hey, dry okay. off. We're worried about you. Yeah. Very definitely. Thank <laughs> you, Tom. Tom. Joe Zone's up next with the sports tonight, the final test for a local girls climb to the Olympics. Plus, the first day of competition at Wimbledon. Sports is next on Newswatch 16. Richard Harris and Vanessa Redgrave in Camelot tomorrow. Okay, Joe, I bet we start with the Olympics tonight. This is a very important time right now. By the way, it's nice to be back. It's nice, nice to, to have you back. Got to be daddy for a week. That was <laughs> nice. Country's best swimmers right now in Indianapolis for the Olympic swimming trials. And Clark Summit, Sue Heon is there. I tell you, what a job she did this morning in the qualifier. Heon swam the fastest 400 individual medley of her life. She finished second behind Tracy Calkins who happens to be the best in the world in that event. So if Sue Heon can duplicate that performance tonight in the finals, she'll make the team. And I'll let you know tonight at 11. By the way, our Tim Carlson is in Indianapolis covering the finals, covering the trials, but we won't be able to show you any of the highlights. That's because ABC owns the Olympics, and therefore they own the trials. They're not allowing any TV coverage. That amounts to a news blackout, and then that, in my view, stinks. The Susquehanna Valley Gym Stars won't have this year's Olympics on their minds, but there's still a big event coming up for the Snyder County Club. They've been invited to perform at this year's World's Fair in New Orleans. Saying yes to the invitation was the easiest task for the Gym Stars. The tough part was raising enough money to get the team to and from New Orleans. The children started selling candy tickets. They did, uh, we had raffles, we had tag days. We're selling hoagies. We're making about a thousand hoagies tomorrow trying to get money raised for it. And uh, so far we've raised enough money to get the children on the train and have them, at least they're going to New Orleans. That's for darn sure. The gym stars do compete as a member of the U.S. Independent Gymnastics Association. They've got a couple of state champs too, but this summer's performance at the World's Fair will certainly be the highlight for these kids. The most famous tennis tournament in the world is Wimbledon. It began today in England. A couple of tough matches for some of the big guns early. John McEnroe, take a look at him. There he is, defending champ, top seed. He beat Australian Paul McNamee in four sets, but the anti-McEnroe crowd cheered when McNamee won the third set tiebreaker right here, seven to six. But Big Mac prevails. He wins today in four sets. Number two, Yvonne Lendl won in five sets against Dick Stockton. Jimmy Connors, number three, also won. McEnroe, by the way, was being ripped by the British media even before this tournament began. Everyone apparently is waiting for Mac to go into one of his temper tantrums and waiting for Wimbledon officials to throw him out. But McEnroe was very controlled today, very cool. And what better way to stick it to all of those English stuffed shirts than to go out and play the best tennis these people have ever seen with a closed mouth and with wide open hands to collect the 157,000 prize money and his third straight Wimbledon trophy. That's the way I like to see McEnroe play this one. Well, the Phillies and the Mets are in first place in the National League East, and tonight that's going to change at least for a day. The start of a three-game series at the Vet in Philly. It's our Monday night game of the week. No Tigers, thank you. 8.20 start here on 16. The Chicago Cubs started the day just a half game behind, but they're in trouble. They're trailing uh, the last place Pirates in this afternoon's game. Bill Madlick right here. His second home run. The Pirates are leading that game right now. It's 3-0 in the seventh inning. That's all of it. Give tonight your best shot. I'll see you at 11 o'clock after the ball game. Let you know how Sue Heon did. We're pulling for her. Yeah. Boy, that's amazing. Amen. That's Good too bad us. we can't show you anything. I know. Why don't you write a letter to the president of ABC, Joe? They could care less. Yeah. <laughs> now, it is good to have you back. Though, that's Joe. right. Nice to have you, pal. All right, stick with us. Now, we're going to begin part five of a series on what our kids are doing with their summer vacations. Tonight, we'll go to Wayne County to visit with some people learning about what's around them. Saints Peter and Paul Plains will have their summer festival July 5th, 6th, and 7th at the school playground. Games, refreshments, entertainment, and a variety of Polish and Italian foods. School may have ended for the summer, but many teenagers soon discover that learning never stops. Tonight, we have part one of a five-part series called Summertime. 
Kathy Bellich discovers how students in Pike and Wayne counties tonight are spending their summertime. I walk on the ground, it's highly radioactive. You have to work together as a team on these boards. Oh. Oh, Touch off. the ground, time starts again. This is what Wayne County Conservation Camp is all about, learning about our surroundings and how to preserve them. Why do you think it's so open and park-like in, in through this section? It's not like the rest of the woods around Lackawack at all, is it? Botanist Dr. Richard Bell is teaching these 12 teenagers as much as he can in one week about nature's cycles minus man's helping or destructive hand. We'd like them to appreciate nature the way it is and not, not be under the impression that nature has to be tampered with and uh, modified in order to, uh, to be of any value to man or to be of value to other organisms. That may not have been exactly why many of these boys from all over Wayne and Pike counties came here, but their reasons are close enough. I wanted to learn stuff about wildlife and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know, my mom wanted me to go too. I like to hunt and fish. and thought maybe I'd learn a little bit more about what I, what I was doing. In between learning all these things, they can take time out for boat rides and swimming just for the fun of it. This is the fourth year for the conservation camp, and looking back, Dr. Bell feels that it is successful in moving young people's minds in different directions when it comes to how they feel about their natural surroundings. Kathy Bellich, Newswatch 16, somewhere on Lake Wallenpawpack. And it's something they're going to remember for the rest of their lives. That's for sure. Summer camp. And that's News Watch 16 for this Monday. Be sure to join us tonight on the update when we'll be heading to the hills to live the life of a missionary. World News Tonight is next with a story on today's failure of the space shuttle. And we'll be back tonight after the baseball game for the team. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy your evening.